Hello everyone, this is a gray shop once I've bring you another company of heroes 3 play brought to you by if you want to skip this part and not know who sent it Then skip this part Sent in by Kubel, I think it's Kublu Whatever the case may be he submitted this replay. So thank you very much, sir. If you want to submit a replay you can do so via my gmail or Oh, that's nice. I don't know why you think I guess that may be French that is, congratulations, you know more than me. Um, if you want to submit to my Gmail or Facebook located in the description below, that would be awesome. I'll check it out and possibly showcase your replay. Uh, this is a 2v2 on Crossing in the Woods, right down here. We have Cool Blue and Shirts Pew versus Clem and Surdrick with, uh, let's double check, ranks. About even, I would say, about even. Um, Again, just amount of play time is really what that shows. So about even in play time. Anyway, let's see. We have a Volk squad pushing up against two British infantry section. This is going to go bad. British infantry section, very good long range and cover as long as he stops moving. They should be able to outfire the Volk squad, although he might capture the point in time. Um, he was going to get destroyed here. Uh, I'm assuming he's just sacrificing it at this point. They. Nice job capturing the fuel, but with no connect connection points, you're not going to get anything from it. Stern Pioneer's getting close, and oh wow, Stern Pioneer's getting close. So we actually have a flank coming in right now. Very cool. Nice job getting in the building, provides supportive fire from heavy cover. Stern Pioneer's getting annihilated, running up, but within that cover, they're doing pretty good, damn good. Stern Pioneer's annihilating the British Infantry by close range. British Infantry suck close range, unless you give them some upgrades, but... Nonetheless, very nice flank, but that probably leaves the right side. Yep, it does. So we've Soviet and British versus two AKW. So the Soviet player's like, hey, if he's not going to take this other side, I'm going to take it. And by God, am I going to take it. And we can see, also see here MG, so he's going to push in for mid as well. Also, very, um, I've been doing more tests with this MG. They, and they, they did the arc thing, but they made the suppression not as good as the MG uh, 42, which I actually kind of find actually pretty cool. Um, they, they turned it, uh, they changed it, um, originally had a smaller arc of fire, but you quickly turn it, and it was pretty good suppression, now it has a larger arc of fire, but not as much suppression, so that's pretty good for dealing with Soviets, also it's nice for a Soviet player to just have that type of arc, so, you know, kind of enjoy that, Sir Pioneer's coming to the flank, Conscript's just ignoring the fact, probably could save this unit, if he can oh, here he comes, now he's like, oh, maybe I should save my squad, man, they're getting mowed down, holy mackerel, that free MG, maybe? I mean, it's not an amazing MG, but for OKW players, it, I mean, what's your alternative, MG-34? Which also is not exactly great, unless you get armor-piercing rounds, then it can turn pretty damn good. Nice job stealing the MG, looks like he's going to be able to escape. Oh, wait! Pick it up, run, and he escaped. Very nice. But, shows here... Uh, that the uh, Axis pretty much captured the entire left side, and the Soviets captured the right. But overall, resource-wise, you can see here the Axis are getting more. So we should uh, probably expect not only medical trucks or mechanized trucks. Okay, he's putting a medical truck here. Probably, honestly, I mean, I guess, I guess he put here for the medical purposes to heal units coming back. This is a smaller map, so you don't have to put a forward medical base, especially versus a Soviet player with Katusha issues. Probably would have placed it here. Because that way, not only this player would get the medical treatment, but also this player. They, they, the, the medical guys would go back and forth. That's what I would recommend. Anyway, it looks like they have to retreat, which is not a bad idea from a giant, I don't say blob, but a horde of uh, conscripts running your way. So, regrouping, not a bad strategy. Um, British infantry pushing on the left-hand side. We have an MG being deployed in that building. Though, it doesn't look like, okay, it does a little bit of damage. But yeah, this the British should be able to push in. Now, there's only a Verkenwerf over here, so if I was the British infantry, I would put an MG here, capture this point, capture this point. If there's any resistance, turn the MG. Um, Stern Pioneer's trying to hold out, but the MG, along with two conscripts, should annihilate him. Probably should retreat that. Uh, overall, manpower-wise, though, it looks like the Allies actually have more men. So we'll see how well that goes. Kubel grabbing the right-hand side, not a bad idea. Kubel can capture territory. This MG is like, hanging out. Over here, I guess they're like, we'll guard the fuel, even though the Kubel's like, alright, that's cool, I'll just take the point in the meantime. You could kill me, but I guess you don't really care. Um, also, Soviet player, I'm just saying, mines. Just, just pointing it out there, mines. Now, let's see on the left-hand side. Stern Pioneer's back up with an MG being deployed. That's an MG-34. It says heavy machine gun team being deployed. It's, 
The MG34, sure, is a heavy machine gun team. But honestly, it's not... It's not great. It's... It's, uh... It's, it has a decent suppression, but it, it there's a reason why it costs way less than an MG42. It's, it, or it, just normal MGs in general. It's not amazing. It really isn't. I, w I wish it was, but it's not. Anyway, MG going in here, capturing this point. Not a bad idea. Again, kind of guarding this piece of territory. Along with the Kubel. Actually, with the Kubel, probably would... Try to pick off some of these guys. Do you have the AT grenades? You do not. So the Kuwa has free game over, over you. Uh, let's see. Volk Squad's trying to hold him back. We still have the MG over here. Out of suppression range. But whatever the case may be, that's still a good thing. Because that means these Volk Squads could annihilate this Conscript Squad. Now the MG's in range. And you fucked up. Nice job throwing the fire, though. Kick the Conscripts out. Maybe you can grab the point. Overall, star-wise, it looks like the Allies are losing. Um, again, because they don't have the majority of the points, they're barely holding on. Why you stood in that fire, I will never know. But you just lost a decent conscript squad. And you put your medical right next to the other medical. Alright. Interesting choice. Both squads capture left, I mean mid, and left and right are secure. Looks like we have a big, well, it looks like a defensive line is going in. Looks like, uh... Oh god, so Cohen and Surgic are just trying to gain a point, but as you can see, the Axis are doing a hell of a job coordinating and um, pushing back those MGs. Really nice. But uh, the big thing that I would say is really nice is the fact that this guy's like, okay, I'm not going to push his lines because especially early game, it's very, very difficult to attack enemy base without some type of armor support. So, very, very cool that uh, at least he's playing defense and realizing that I don't need to push. I can just stand back. Now, where did his Verkent Werfer go? Oh, there. The, oh, sorry, the Verkent Werfer here. Okay, it's back here. Probably should move up to the heavy cover, even hiding in a distance. Oh, great. Now you're pushing up, but you fucked up. Not only did the British guy, aka Clem, upgrade to Brens, which are very, very powerful, but they're also increasing the amount of men in the squad, so they actually pack more of a punch. So you are going to get annihilated. Man, once I just commented you, you literally do the thing that you should not have done, and you got your ass whooped. So congratulations. Congratulations. Anyway, the British Infantry... Oh, God, with friends and Piots, that's going to be one hell of a... Uh, well, yeah, just a fighting force. Now, the problem is this MG's still here, and they went in negative cover, so it's very easy to suppress them. Shock troops on the uh, right hand side. He went the Soviet shock army. Interesting use. Uh, the heavy mortar and the artillery is very good. The mortar because it's very effective on this map because it is a smaller map. And the artillery because you could literally build it outside of the allied base. And then fire upon the axis base. And pretty much target all the buildings relatively easily and kill them very quickly. So if they can protect this artillery it's very bad. Plus by what the doctrines they went they don't necessarily have a permanent direct strike i mean i guess scavenge doctrine but because there's no real buildings you can deploy a lot of jaeger troops from or scatter really kind of flank i wouldn't go this i would honestly maybe fortifications mixed with special operations that way you have a mixture of supportive tactics and uh, art uh artillery and also heavy at nice okay so decommissioning de that kubel for fuel not a bad idea um also, shock troops, which are very good close range, and as we saw, capturing right hand side and just you know capturing more territory. The Volk squads will get destroyed. Storm pioneers will get annihilated. So shock troops are pretty much the OP unit at this moment. They could use MG fire to stop it, but again, remember those shock troops have smoke, so they can kind of get around MGs. Their shock troops are again, if you don't know, uh, are a, a troop designed to break heavy enemy positions that that's what shock troops are meant for they're 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 deployed in heavily fortified areas to break the line and then allow the normal troops to come in and kind of access and exploit said line so just a little fat in fact nice demo by the way that we can see when they're capturing the point boom goes the dynamite and so goes all of the possible german body parts now it looks like he's coming over here and unlike before where he had the advantage uh, unfortunately, no cover, so these guys are pretty much are got you know got pretty much wrecked. Now he's in one building. This is a bad idea for some folk squads. Not only okay, so he he went special operations operations, which uh, allows for infiltration grenades. Probably should have threw one in there because that would have 
because not only could he hit the front door with one, but you could have destroyed everything in the building. That would have been pretty cool. But we'll see how things go. You put a mortar pit, Clem, and not actually in a pretty good location too, with the forest guarding it. Not not really directly see fire. Also, enemy fire could be stopped by trees and debris. So not a bad location, and the mortar should be able to protect a lot of these forward operation points. Not good for hitting enemy positions behind their lines, but very very good for killing and uh, combating enemy uh, charges so that could be a very good thing indeed looks like we have the flamethrower unit falling back he did get minesweepers so that demo couldn't be seen now okay he's placing a mine not a bad idea well you're you know not doing anything around a point but like hey i can place a mine um let's see it looks like we have a push oh man he stole a well he stole something i'm assuming it was an mg34 or he stole back the no no he probably no he's probably mg34 not a bad idea stealing with shock troops though the unit the squad is now full of shock troops so it costs a lot more to refill that mg squad though it will last longer so you know boom, boom, you know plus and minuses on that um army composition wise the axes are way down and have to stop attacking at this moment they really need to focus on defensive capabilities they can't launch a major assault if they really have to exploit the allies and allow them to push and then kind of overwhelm them through defensive fire if they attack with a smaller army not only would the the allies be able to simply counter that but they could push and there wouldn't be as many forces on the okw to really defend and they could actually push the okw back okay flanking with a bunch of guys now i'm very very surprised hold on so you're putting this command post very surprised you don't have any uh again these pyrotechnic supplies because you call that in that's a base artillery from their position you can see here there's two artillery pieces fire artillery even white phosphorus if you allow it through the uh the anvil upgrade which is fantastic at not only hurting vehicles but killing emplacements and uh all sorts of stuff and even hurting infantry so that's why i would recommend very nice job going with the minesweeper again you always want to be very careful though it looks like again with this heavy bridge infantry is just wrecking the okw now he has almost so done which is very good heavy infantry but that's when you get the upgrades and now they're essentially just very defense very good defensive infantry they're not great on offensive unless you give them the upgrade but nice job with those uh, Brens and stuff. It, pushing back and holding back both squad. But we can see here, fire grenade. And that'll do a lot more damage against in, in buildings because it's fire in a building. I don't know what smoke 101, but yeah, it doesn't do great. Anyway. With those, uh, with actually that was a nice push by them. He has SCG 44s now. Provided by the upgrade. So that should help him counter the uh, British infantry section. At least for a time. Um, one squad will not handle three, but if he gets two, yes, then they start, they can, they can actually start destroying enemy units, especially conscripts. Oh my God, will these units eat conscripts for lunch, dinner, and breakfast, and, you know, throw in an appetizer, though shock troops are a good counter. Shock troops, again, have enough armor and defensive capabilities to really hurt them if, and this is a big fucking if. If they gain close. If they don't, the SDG 44s will annihilate them. Um, also, I love how the MG... Oh, I think there's an MG, right? I want to say there's an MG that suppressed that area. I guess not, huh? Then what suppressed the unit over there? Am I missing a bunker? No, there's bunker there, bunker there. Alright, we have a Centaur being deployed. That's an allied... Pretty much a, a tank. While it's extremely effective at killing an aircraft... It's also, nice skin by the way, it's also very good at killing infantry with its auto cannon. Now, we'll see how effective it is against enemy positions. We do know that the enemy has for Kenworfers and also folk squads which can fire Panzerfaust. So if they use that in the correct, wow, that was a really nice grenade. If they do it in the right combination, it could destroy um, that centaur with ease or the centaur could very quickly just annihilate them. It just depends on how each player reacts and how each player responds in a critical scenario. Um, such as, oh boy, I can't believe I'm saying that. Whatever. Uh, uh, for example, tomorrow I will be introduced to a little thing called pepper spray. And my reaction afterwards depends on how I do during that, that proceeding. Whether I, you know, manage to... Uh, there's a small percentage of people who are unaffected. I'm praying to God I am. But there's also a rather large majority that is affected and will cry like a baby. Though, again, you uh, in my position, I can't do that, so I have to respond, you know, 
as one would, uh, or one should do in that situation, and try to hold out against the pain. Whether I do that or not will be up in the air until that actually happens. And uh, if you are asking, Grey Shot, will that be future content? No, I'm not going to film my 12th game pepper sprayed. Not a narcissist. Now, um, I'm not a narcissist. What's it? A masochist? I guess that would be the word. Masochist is a better word. Anyway, Stern Pioneers, come around the flank. Why the hell is MG's not firing? Is beyond. There we go. What the fuck? What the hell is that guy doing? Pl it was like. You see me, uh, sorry, you spin me right round, baby, right round. And it's like, literally, I, god damn, look like I thought he was going to start flying. Anytime I see an object do that, I think of Gamera from the Guardian, from the, if you don't know, Gamera is a ri competitive rival to Godzilla. And you'd say, oh, that win, it must not be a good film. Actually, the, there's a series of Gamera films in the 90s that I will say, is probably on par with some of the best is probably the best monster trilogy and i swear to god it's like what do you mean monster trilogy yes there's three of them the best monster trilogy that's ever been released and also best set of really good movies ever um in the 90s and this and some of the best monster fights even in the 90s it, with cgi as it is it holds up really damn well um but anyway a uh, Gamera to fly a giant turtle. He starts spinning and he turns to a flying saucer. Um, looks like the allies were trying these big assaults, but unfortunately the OKW are doing a really fantastic job of defending. Kind of bringing in the number of units and actually kind of the lines and, well, probably much army size more and more close together. So we'll see how well things go. Also, point-wise, though, playing defensive is actually working out for the Axis because we look at points. The allies are half down. So that's a very, very good thing. We'll see how well things go for a, long t for a longer point. But one thing I will say is a key is that Pew right now has a ton of manpower. Now you could say, be saying, Grave Shot, isn't he hoarding? Yes and no. He, yes, by definition he is hoarding. But I'm assuming he's doing that to either A, get a, a Panther command tank, which I think is less likely. I think what's more likely happening is A, he's keeping his Obasol Dotten. Which, unfortunately, looks like he just lost the squad. I'm assuming from that... No, he didn't lose it from the demo. I'm actually surprised he don't get rid of that demo. But, um... Is he placing a mine there? So, de Oh my god, that would be amazing if he placed a mine around the demo. That way, when he thinks, Oh, I'm fine! Boom! Goes his own unit. Katusha firing close range on enemy forces. But he could be trying to save up. That way he has enough manpower for his Obel Sodaten, which takes up a lot. Holy crud! Those Panzer Force Leaders took a lot of damage. Which brings up the... Breakthrough Doctrine. This is great for some great infantry support. Long range infantry with the Panzer Pulse of Layers. Let's artillery to break up any key enemy positions around the map. Defending a key point. And most importantly, the Yag Tiger, which is a great tank buster. But be warned, it's a great tank buster, but very susceptible to enemy infantry and long range AT. Also, not very fast. So if you pin it, let's say, with a T 34 and call it an airstrike, you're doing pretty damn well. Also, why the hell did you get a T 70? That was one, that, that, that was a fuck up if I ever saw one. Dude, uh, you have the mechanized armor Campania. You have enough fuel th without that that you could have seriously got a T-34, which would have been much more effective. Especially, uh, well, nothing would have been effective just charging enemy, behind enemy lines, but whatever. It would have been more effective. Also, you have a Jagdpanzer here, so he's prepped and ready to go for defensive purposes to hold out. It looks like the Axes are now launching more assaults against the Allies, trying to take that advantage of their, their recent successes and push the enemy back. We'll see how well things go. SCG-44 doing a one fantastic, well, doing a fantastic job of demolishing the infantry. Two squads dead. Katusha taking fire. Uh, you should probably pull that back. As that infantry, again, Katusha has much armor as a scout vehicle, aka none. Meaning, infantry can do a lot. Also, it's down range. It can easily panzer found if it wanted to, and apparently it did not for some stupid reason, and even though you have the munitions for it. Whatever the case may be. Still a lot of good. Oh, wow. Steel RMG on top of it. Why not? Oh, no. <laughs> you lost your Volk squad. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that wasn't the best move. Maybe not. Infiltration grenades going out, but missing the AT gun by a decent margin. 
Nice job though capturing, oh never mind, I was going to say capturing the point, but no he doesn't capture the point, which allows the, well, the Soviet player to be like, alright cool, I guess all those resources. Problem is the Axis right now are kind of clumping, they have a lot of forces over here, they have a Command Panther, which I guess he did go, I guess he was saving, yep, he got a ton of Oversold Dot, so good for him. Um, Oversold Dot versus Shock Troops, very interesting, we'll see how well that goes. Although, it seems like Oversold Dot had been losing it, because he's been having to get more units. Um, okay, yeah, the building's about to get to, uh, be destroyed. Get out of the building, seriously. All right, so let's see. You have a Cromwell, and you have a Centaur. Problem, they have a Panther, can beat Cromwell, and the Ag Panther, or Panzer, sorry. That can beat a Cromwell. So right now, the British have good armor, but the Axes have good counter to it. So he has to play smart if he's able to really combat that. So we'll see how well that goes. Um... So, do you have any heavy? You do not. You should probably have gotten a heavy mortar by now. Well, yeah. I know they can cost a lot, but they're really, really good at busting OKW lines. So, that was my suggestion. As he, well, we have a Sturmvik strike being called in to kill infantry. And while it's very good against infantry, you have to worry about these Panzer headquarters buildings shooting down the plane. Um, maybe it'll crash in enemy positions. I don't know. We shall see. It would be amazing. Kind of hoping it does, but, you know, also, pretty much I doubt it. Damn, that was a cool plane shot. And it's probably going to be called in. King's more forces. Now, they probably should start just trying to pick off some infantry, if I were them. I, I think this is currently... No, yeah, it should have the tank commander. That's an obvious thing you should probably get. It's like one of those simple things like, who gets a scout car and does not get the auto cannon upgrade? Everyone gets the auto cannon upgrade. And then they just like, fine, we'll implement it just for the unit because everyone got it so much. Um, there goes the plane. I was like, eventually it'll be shot down. And there it goes. So we play our launching a big assault on the other side, pulling multiple demos. But here's an idea. A, don't put your MG in any of the cover. And B... Watch for the goddamn units! You actually hit something with the demo charges. That would be a cool thing, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Anyway, T-34 and Cromwell pushing up the gut, but we have the Eye Panther here and the Command Tank, which increases sight and sound. What the hell did you go? Tactical Support Regiment. Ah, uh, don't get me wrong. I like artillery cover, and it's very effective at suppressing and killing infantry and armor. So it's a cool idea. But not a lot of buildings you can put your... Actually, no, well, you could have put it here, but I guess it died. Um, Is there a building somewhere that you could put it that... I guess over here. You can call in, like, close air support and stuff like that. Don't have time munitions, but could work. Um, artillery cover coming in. You have to keep sight lines on all the units. Provide smoke for allies. And, uh, well, call, it calls in artillery on any positions. So don't actually suppress infantry. Damn, that was a good double shot by these guys. Artillery's coming down on these guys. Very surprised artillery isn't hitting the, the yeah, uh, Yag Panzer and the Panther. There we go. There's some good strikes. There we go. And again, it decreases the reload time. Our, look at that artillery cover. Does a lot of damage to enemy armor. Not as effective as it used to be, but still pretty damn effective if you're trying to push into a target. Retreat the shock troops. Also, again, the artillery cover does a lot of damage versus infantry, if you haven't, you know, noticed. Starbuck strike being called in. A lot of munitions being used for... Wow, major retreat. Oh, is he going to kill the unit? No, the unit lives. The unit just barely lives. Very surprised about that. That's Starbuck, though. On standby. Artillery being called in to kill the units healing the armor. Not a bad strategy at all. Actually, a nice hit on the retreat. Again, if you know where their medical is, stuff like that, it's like, hmm, maybe I should hit it. Oh, nice shot on the Panzer Force layers. Good kill. Oh, Starvik Strike. Destroying that infantry charge. Keeping that place active on allied control and allowing them to actually get some points off the axis. Though we look at the amount of units, things are kind of more even. Although, I think Clem should get better armor. Um, probably, if a Comet or a Churchill, I would honestly go, 
it, it, this is tough. <sighs> I'd probably go Churchill. Because uh, you want something that take a lot of hits. And right now you're playing more defensive along with an AT line. So if you have the, the Churchill up front, which is good against killing infantry, along with a tank line, a, uh, sorry, a, a bunch of tank destroyers behind it, you could demolish the enemy um, armor force if you played it right. But will they? Probably not. We'll see how all things go. I'm saying probably not because I haven't seen really an effective counter attack. Nice job in the mine, killing the shock troops from before. Three shock troops is a bit overkill, especially if you're sending out piecemeal. Try to group them together. Um, the, one of the reasons why I like the B4 doctrine so much, aka the counterattack, is because one of the abilities is literally boost your infantry, make them OP. Having like two or three shock troop squads with that, holy mackerel, will sit on one stand chance. Nice demo though. Looks like you blew up. Oh shit. You blew up both of them. Oh, that's a huge loss. Damn it, I wish I would have saw it. But, well, we can see the floating corpses of Obel Sodan. Yeah, this is a glitch. Uh, they'll just hang there, watching, with their guns out. Even though the conscripts in British infantry will be like, Hey, can we grab the gun? No, we can't. Because reasons. Because reasons. Anyway, MG here. Uh, this is the part where you would try to call an artillery or something on there. We have three panthers. Uh, sorry, two panthers. No, three. Holy, yeah, three panthers. I'm like, wait, is there only... I, oh, two? No, 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 it's three. It's three. Oh, this panther just charged in the wrong place. A T line and opening fire along with Centaur. One more shot and that thing is dead. Probably going to get this kill. Oh, Bound saves it. Very lucky. Again, panther front armor, very good at deflecting rounds. What you need to do is hit the side. Again, that was a nice trap, but it would have been more effective if you would have killed the damn thing. Cartusha could maybe? No, it's actually too armored. There's too much health on it. Uh, it'd be close, but maybe if the Katusha got enough shells, could kill it. But I guess you don't have anything. Artillery cover coming in. So that's going to really hurt armor and push back a lot of their infantry and whatnot. Also, anything firing, like a support gun, will also be hit. So he has to really worry about that. Bridge infantry moving up. Why you don't have pyrotechnic pyrotechnics at this point, especially, uh, or just even have the hammer, is beyond me. I don't understand why you don't have that. The nice job looks like you're going to kill that support gun. Very nice counterattack by the allies. I thought this would have been like, oh, this is, you know, an easy game to call. But no, it's actually pretty damn close going back and forth. The only thing that's really, uh, that's, again, big decisive is the fact the points. If the Axis can keep control of the points for just a little longer, they will win the game. But that's if they can keep control. Right now, the allies are doing a fantastic push, locking down this piece of territory. And then also, as you can see in mid pushing back the entire Axis force and doing a ton of damage to their armor, even though that the allied armor is not really sufficient. Though we see that we have a Firefly being deployed and we have another Katusha. So it looks like one player is going more armor focused with the other players going artillery focused. And that's actually a good strategy because you could really, again, with the artillery focused guy, you could have him pretty much keep annihilating the entire, uh, you know, everything behind enemy lines. While the other guy can really focus on armor and helping to make sure his units are alive. Centaur moving up, I guess, just to kill this. We have multiple Panthers, though, that can get some shots off. Yep, there goes that unit. Wow, the... A lot of units have been dying. Uh, don't know why the Centaur is still here. Should probably pull back when you see double Panthers. Oh, uh, one more shot, and it's a goner. AT guns on standby, then. We have something being called in. It's artillery cover again. Sturvik strike being called in. Interesting. Oh, nice job hurting the support gun. Shocks is moving up. This again, uh, they threw some smoke grenades, but again, this is a scenario in which, like, you know, it's here in the first place. Maybe smoke your way up so they can't see you coming. I mean, they'll see the smoke, but I mean, literally, the building won't see you, or the MG won't see you, so they won't target you. Um, one benefit that I will see is I think they only have. Do they even have a? They they do not have a. Well, now they're making one, but they didn't have a mechanized building, so that they have to be repaired manually. So those, that's where the Katushas could really come in handy at neutralizing that stuff. It looks like one Katusha did die, I'm assuming from assault artillery, so that does suck. But, lo and behold, at least, well, he's getting, uh, at least he's getting an SU-85, so maybe now they'll have a mix. Because while having a single guy focus on artillery is good, um, having a more diverse range of units is also good, because then you can prioritize what is hitting you. 
The British don't really have that per se, so maybe having an additional one for him be like, hey, do you want this? Either give him control via bringing it down to low health, or the smart thing is just saying, hey, this is for you. Let me know when you want me to fire it, and I'll hit that location. But the Allies right now, again, have a again decent amount of uh, fuel munitions compared to the Axis over here. If they can keep up the pressure, if they can keep up and uh, keep holding the enemy back, they'll be doing fine. Now, unfortunately, the Axis have been losing forces to really obscure means. I I wish they would have pulled them back a little bit more, and I do think that you knew about mines, but you didn't... When your most powerful and um, important unit, you're like, nah, I won't guard it. It's like, why? That's like rule number one. Guard your goddamn flank. Also, why the fuck would you put a mine right... I, like, I don't mind mines, but literally... It's like, here would be a good mine. Not literally inside your base. What are you hoping to do? Kill, kill something that's charging you? Well, at that point, you should be able to kill it. Oh, my God. If this other demo hits the panther, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it. I'm just gonna lose it. Unfortunately, the artillery hasn't been able to kill the bases, so he's, they've been doing a pretty good job with their sturms and healing everything. I'll give him that. Nice shot with the on the eye panther. Like, wow, it actually did damage. Wait, why is something just killed the Katusha? I'm assuming a panther. Oh, yep, Katusha was over here. Why the fuck you were over there? I don't know. You should have. Why are you going in circles? Panther's coming in, being like, "Hey, I guess we can help. I can join in the fun, guys, right?" Right. Another demo looks like knocked something out. Why the fuck you moved up on that? I don't know. You should have pulled back. And you should have had some other AT gun guarding your flank. S-85s are very good, but also vulnerable to flanks. I... Oh, my God. Oh, so look at all the global Sudan. I love this. It's like, shh, you don't see us. We're hiding in the bushes. God damn, CH2 cheese. Oh, thank you. My spaghetti's done. What in God's name is going on? Why are they... Oh, they're, this is a sewage tube glitch. This having... 151, everybody. Hi, hi, everyone. Are they having a campfire? They look like they're watching, like, a fake fire. Like, there's just no fire They're there. playing dead. <laughs> if we stand here and not move, they won't know we're here. Um, unfortunately, while the British player is doing fantastic on his... Keeping his units alive, the, the Soviet player is the weak point. And, uh, right now... <laughs> oh, boy. He needs to start pulling his weight because if he doesn't and actually start keeping his armor alive, I could see this like kind of like a slinky or something where it's compressed enough it'll just spring out upon the enemy. So we'll see how well things go. I'm hopeful that the enemy or I guess the Axis at this point will spring back. But if the allies are smart, which again this guy's ton of munitions, I'm not seeing any mines anywhere. Would place mines at key points to make sure if a panther charge, which is ever more likely by the amount of panthers that they are gaining, and will probably deploy, uh, yeah, uh, very, well, we'll see how things go. Oh, look, a charge. I wonder how much ET you have. Oh, you actually have a decent amount of ET. Move the centaur back! That is, oh my god. Okay, Firefly doing its job. Panther is moving in though. Nice kill. Panther's now moving up. They're like, we're gonna kill the Bofer! And if Firefly's like, get the fuck back. Although it just bounced, so I can't even say that. It's E gun. Um, harden! Activate Harden, please. Please activate Harden! Why the fuck are you not activate? Also, why the hell did you. Again, by the way, in case you're wondering, this is 360. Alright? Uh, straight from support, so assuming we call it in here, maybe. Or maybe you already call in artillery cover, firefly, mark target from the command panther. Hey, T gun's not even looking right. Mines would have been beautiful, but most likely you're gonna lose that unit. And a T gun, although there, artillery cover buying smoke for the lot of the firefly to escape, it's now just screwing it over by allowing them to really just charge through and be like, hello, and get around the ET line. And look, no mines, so I guarantee you these Panthers are just going to retreat. No issues, no problems. And yeah, mines would have been beautiful. Just to, just to delay them. 
And that was the crack they needed to bring the British guy to half his army size. Oh boy. Here's a lot of manpower to, I guess, get some things back, but not a lot of fuel. So he's not going to get a firefly back in. Well, at least anytime. Plus more armor. So we'll see how things go. S85 here, but nothing to block the Obol So Dotten. Which, once again, mines! They're four man squads. You can literally cut them in half. Oh, look, Shock Troops coming in. I, I don't worry. I like blobs as much as the next guy, but uh, this is uh, just a suggestion. Maybe just send. Uh, oh my god, retreat! You lost three man squad. It, oh my god, shock troops. If he, if the shock troops kill it, nope, it lives. Well, I'm glad it was an equal trade. Not really. Now the Axis have more than enough men. They could really start putting pressure on the Allies and actually force them to. Keep engaging at these points, which they can't afford to do right now. Also, three Panthers, really? Really, Pew? Anyway, Cool Bull, or Cool Blue, lots of Pantsful Slayers, long range, I guess, to help fight against, you know, conscripts and also beefed up infantry section. Need to get upgraded, though, before they're effective, but why not? Something's being called in. Cervix Strike's being called in. Demolishing that infantry, very cool. But, yeah, I think at the... At this point, the amount of armor and infantry the Axes have compared to the Allies, I'm calling it now. Uh, and I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. The reason, oh, uh, well, maybe not. The reason I say that is just because they have so much armor and infantry that the Allies have been so ill-coordinated. Um, they they push back a few times, but yeah, it's just finishing and doing a final shot and kill on that is the big thing. And I have not. I've really not seen the Allies actually, like, do a decisive kill. Sure, when the Panther's in their own lines, yeah, but they haven't been able to, like, kill it. And I think mines would have been beautiful. Like, this Soviet player has some, like, spurts of imagination with the demos and whatnot. But and but then, like, he will place more mines. And then this guy will be like, I want more of a Sodaten, but he won't guard the damn things with a Minesweeper so they don't get blown to Kingdom Come. Uh, Kubel's doing pretty good. I mean, he did sacrifice his panther, but I'm assuming he's sailing for a king or a yag at this moment. moment. Or a yag tiger, not a panther, I should probably clarify. Um, also, again, you have a ton of infantry, but they're not exactly equipped to deal with panthers. They're basically here to fight infantry. And did you get the upgrade yet? I swear. Oh, no, you didn't. So, right now you have pyrotechnics, which would be amazing with white phosphorus to kill this thing, but you don't have it. So, whatever. Panthers on the left-hand side. This is where a... Well, more AT guns would be better. Not so close to the front. Why are you... Oh, my God. Command, Panther. Increase sight. Meaning, guess what? It's going to shoot you in the face. Also, mines. Just, just mines. Or say, oh, great shot. They can't afford. They don't have enough munitions. Remember... They could have put a munitions point here, munitions point here, munitions point... Oh, they put a fuel... Oh, they did put a munitions point there. Congratulations. You got one. Oh, and that point here. Yoki W can't put down points because they physically can't. You do. You can use that to your advantage. The T gun's not moving because they don't give a shit anymore. And this is where... This is where the allied line cracks. Nice job with SV-85. I'm assuming a Firefly might... Oh, no. Firefly is just hanging out mid. Not really worrying about the Panthers on the left-hand side. That can, he could help kill. Oh, now he moves. Oh, wonderful. Delayed reaction. So that's that, that's the biggest problem with this game is goddamn delayed reaction. Yet you, you need to be able to react very, very quickly. I know some... Look, I don't mind... Oh, my God. The Firefly's still hanging back. I don't mind in some occasions... Oh, nice shot with the... At least kill one Panther. That you... You're slow to react. I get that. That happens. When you're focused on CHG on one front and you see switch to another, it's like, oh shoot. And you quickly react and you try to do something. And it may not be as fast or as easy as you want it to be, but whatever. You, you got it. But why this guy doesn't turn his AT gun? Why the fact that, you know, he didn't push in the first place? He could have got more paint. Wow, okay, flying tree. They could have got more kills. They really could have. Now, if he fires a fire. Oh, wow. Nice job. Fire at infantry. Wonderful. That's a tank destroyer, by the way. Oh. Wonderful. Just, just, just freaking wonderful. The enemy are attacking an emplacement. 
Anyway, uh, MG currently suppressing the infantry in mid, though. Again, the Allies probably going to lose this just by victory points, if I had to assume. They're, they're losing a lot to guard those and the Axis, although losing quite a bit. Still have a huge army and a decent pool to keep, you know, getting more units from. Oh, please tell me that's not a Cromwell. It's a guy. Why would you go for the Cromwell? Just get a Churchill or... You need something to fight Panther. It's not a Cromwell. I get a T-34 because you could ram the son of a gun on its side. But it won't help. It won't. It's a like, great shot, but you need something to fight infantry as well. That's what a Churchill and Comets are good at. Killing both infantry and armor. Yeah, they're pushing up right now. It's... It, I... Well, they might hold out for a second, but we'll see. He just has to stay, he literally has to stay in this point for 10 seconds and he wins this game. Well, he probably not. Shock troops, armor piercing rounds! We'll suppress everything in the vicinity. I swear to god, they cap it because you didn't activate armor piercing rounds, they didn't suppress all of them. And... Very close, but no shebang. Wow, you caught down the pyrotechnics. Cool. I'm so glad that you don't have anything to go with it, so it's not going to hurt anything. Sure, yes, base artillery is pretty good, but then again, white phosphorus on this location would have been amazing to really hurt that armor. But we're not going to see that, because reason. Nice kill. Very nice shot. Yeah, Panther. Very good long range takeout armor. Very good, especially medium things. Rockstrip's trying to come around, but there's just too much, well, pretty much MG fire, and we'll annihilate it before he can retreat. GG, and that's what I would say as well. Could the Allies won this? Absolutely. The Allies and the Axis had multiple opportunities to win the game. Like, I'm, I'm being 100% honest. They could have very easily won this game, but they didn't. Why? Well, very simple. They just reaction times. The Axis were, even though they did suck and made a few mistakes, were better in reaction time. I don't understand what you're doing right now, but yeah, this would have overwhelmed both armored units and would have annihilated the allied pretty much force. So, that's GG. Uh, let's see. Overall damage. Most damage of this game? Actually, yeah, pew. And most kills. Very, very cool. Close, but goes to pew. Uh, Kubel, uh, not half bad. Again, getting very close to what he did by a couple kills and a few thousand damage. Uh, again, the, I'm not saying the allies were bad either. They're, but, yes, Sir Dick was definitely... Could have played better. He could have really played better um, with the hand he was dealt. But, alas. Like, he never got the heavy mortar. And that's something you honestly get to really start hurting Axis lines. And it's not too expensive, so really should have gotten that. Um, also, his unit preservation was not amazing. They both sides should have retreated a lot sooner on multiple occasions, but reaction time, I feel, is like the big draw. It's the big issue of this game. But in any case, that is the game. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys check out, uh, and I also want to do a special thanks to my Patreon supporters, uh, like Leo, Tim, Sean, and Hercules. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys rock. Thank you again. Um, again, if you want to support me, check my Patreon out, or just like and subscribe. That helps me so much, you wouldn't believe. But in any case, this has been GrayShot17, and I will see you guys next time.